I want to begin by stating that this is not one of those goofy videos incessantly poking fun at some clickthirsty retard. Consider it more a reflective piece in response to perhaps one of the faggiest e-drama conflicts I've yet to be dragged into against my will. A sort of drama rape, if you will. I'd also like to warn those averse to hyper-post response videos to maybe sit this one out. Finally, this is not in any way, shape or form any sort of takedown or hit piece. I'm simply giving my side of a really gay story I had no idea I was part of until last night. I agree with Porcelain in the chat, like, Mersh can be a good guy, but like, he just, he's so blind by lust for money. Oh, there it is. There it is. Porcelain, old middle of the road porcelain. Mike Scheel, or Mersh, of the official Owen Benjamin After Show, was a guy I had become familiar with during my work on the Owen Benjamin documentary back in January. In the making of that masterpiece, I would occasionally hop on stream with the almighty Terrasburg himself, eternally grateful for one of his famous gravel-throated plugs. I'd even talk to the guy on occasion outside his show courtesy of his Discord server, and by extension get to know those in the ROTC community quite well too many of which I still speak with to this day. Back then, I thought Mersh was, you know, this affable, funny guy and very welcoming host. So naturally, I devoted a lot of my spare time to that corner of the internet, in efforts at getting my edge back. Since then, I've admittedly drifted somewhat. These documentaries are incredibly time-consuming, and given that every subject brings with it an entirely new subculture to talk to, I would naturally find myself around new people discussing issues congruent to whatever subject I was exploring. But juggling the documentaries with IRL work and social family obligations meant that less and less of my time was being spent around ROTC circles. Now, of course, I didn't expect this to be in any way an issue with Mersh, and I would have assumed he would have understood. Well, we all know what happens when you assume. And it's funny because, you know, twice, me, but like I've had to reach out to Porcelain like a month ago and go like, are we cool? Because you seem like, uh, uh, you know, we, it seems like we're not cool. And he was like, no, nah, man, we're fine. I've just been busy with the bake stuff. And I'm like, oh, I get that, man. Um, and I was like, fine, whatever, dude. Um, and then like, a month went by and we just noticed he hadn't been around and then I checked uh, checked our uh, Discord, he left our Discord. Over the last six months, I've reduced the number of places on Visible Online to just my Twitter and a 20-person casual Discord server. For those I've known a while, such as Thomas Daly and Lance. These are people I've spoken to since the heights of r slash Opian Anthony. And although I'm not there too often, it's literally the last middle finger I can ever give to this world. Hashtag die laughing. Larger servers tend to bring with it a ton of infighting, drama, and competing factions. And given Twitter is my main contact medium, I didn't really put much thought into leaving the ROTC Discord server. After all, it's inconceivable that any reasonable person would even care to bring something like that up. Well, apparently, ho's mad. Uh, I simply pointed out that, yeah, you left our Discord, which is a little weird, right? It's, it's like... It's like unfollowing people on Twitter, right? It's a very passive aggressive move. Told you guys, yeah, he left our Discord, which was pretty conspicuous. Kicked us out of Discords. Again, pretty conspicuous. Um, I don't really have an issue with them. So it turns out there has been a growing trend of people who for one reason or another are not fans of Mersh. Lance and Thomas Daly are two of those very people, and given Mersh's recent proclivity for obsessing over much smaller channels who dislike him, the excitable pair saw an opportunity to have a little fun. Week after week, Mersh would bring up the likes of Don A, Unbleached, Rostog, Ian Ellis, Merlin DeFango, and Host Busters, responding in 40-minute tirades to the slightest of slight criticisms. Now bear in mind, these are channels with much smaller audiences who, I can only assume, are simply having a little innocent fun at Mersh's expense. And in addition, these far smaller channels, again, I can only assume, perhaps see an opportunity to peel off viewers from Mersh's much larger platform, given the readiness of Mersh to address even the most passive of insults. And by the way, Porcelain, I like you. I like you, but... You're very clearly on the side of people who are slandering me. Uh, you're very clearly in the camp of people who 
uh, like that Thomas Daly guy who made a video calling me a pedophile, which even in tongue in cheek, it's just calling me a pedophile. And to the more psychologically fucked up people like Lance and Thomas, this situation is what they live for. Some big time streamer guy wrapped up in a chimeric rage towards one or two of the internet's most obscure trolls night after night after night after night. And just like Ross Dog in Ellis and Unbleached, Lance and Thomas gleefully piled on in provoking Mersh into yet another just like Owen response. It became a sadistic game to these people and for some reason Mersh was willfully playing along. But here's where his participation causes confusion. Mersh considers himself as one of the internet's giant killing anti-heroes, punching up whilst taking down internet bad guys. Whether it's Gabe Hoffman, Owen Benjamin or Dan Schneider, Mersh was, for all intents and purposes, leader of the Terrorsbergs, a rugged internet gang of soccer mom boomers. So to devote so much of his show week in week out painfully reiterating that those poking fun at him have no subs, an ode perhaps to Anthony Cumia's obsession with sending trolls to obscurity, simply misses the mark. And in responding so enthusiastically to channels Mersh himself identifies as lacking any influence, only serves to play directly into their hands. After all, they're simply doing what Mersh did to Owen, punching up in hopes of peeling away support. I haven't said a bad word about porcelain. No, we're going to. I like porcelain. It's unfortunate uh, that you're, you know, kind of being this way. Uh, but I don't know. It's important at this stage to state that this is only my interpretation of events as I see right now. What Mersh does outside my purview is frankly none of my business, and I'm nothing more than a humble observer. Which brings me to my next point. I have absolutely no direct beef with Mike Shield. Until last night's Nightwave show, I've kept entirely to myself, spending whatever spare moment I can salvage working on these documentaries. You could say that every single day has contained a year's worth of battles. Oof. But this sudden focus on what I do and say when he's not around is frankly cringe-inducing. I've never spoken out about him, never covered him in any negative light until now, never conspired against him, never encouraged anybody to say or do a single thing against him, never tweeted about him negatively before last night, and any time I've had something on my mind I've spoken to Mersh directly in direct messages, none of which I would ever have the discourtesy of disclosing. I, I am very much aware uh, that Porcelain is on a Twitter spree about me right now. Uh, apparently. I can't express myself on my own show. By the way, very, very calmly, very methodically. I think I chose my words very carefully last night. I think I was pretty respectful. Sure, I've occasionally participated in the odd unbleached chat. And yes, I speak to people who happen to dislike Mersh. I don't control my entertainment intake or select who I converse with based on their attitudes towards Mike fucking Shield. If that makes me, in his words, middle of the road porcelain, <laughs> nice slam by the way, then I suggest the issue is with him and not me. I have never directed any sort of personal or malicious attacks his way, nor am I residing in any sort of camps of people who do the same. In fact, I struggle to think of any significant public criticism I've ever made to Mersh, which in his case is tantamount to edging. Now of course I have my own thoughts on the guy and at times I don't necessarily agree with or approve of everything he says or does. I'll even admit to a spot of like goofing on Mersh privately, much like I do with everybody. If you're acting clownish, it's kind of hard not to barrel over laughing. If Mersh doesn't like something I say or do on the internet, my advice would be to quit seeking negativity and grow thicker skin. Ultimately, it's none of my business what he says and does, and honestly, this video aside, I wish the guy no ill will whatsoever. I did not take what he said personally and even his baseless paranoia surrounding which camp of haters I belong to or who I'm secretly plotting with only serves to make me smuckle. It's just kind of weird to me like I would just kind of be like yeah leave me out of this one but it's just very like middle of the road guy and then I even dude then you reached out to me a week ago and you're like hey do we have a problem and I'm like no I don't I don't and I wasn't talking about uh, porcelain when I was I was talking about I guess I made a comment about people who had moved on from our community and some of you guys took that vague shit and ran off and like tried to beef with me and poor and I'm like no we're fine but it's a little weird now at the same time I'm not beholden to any sort of community or camp or team or squad or clan or internet gang online communities are a seriously homosexual endeavor and it's just not something I have any interest in starting or becoming a part of. 
I do, however, appreciate the affection thrown my way from ROTC circles, and I very much like a lot in that group. But I'm just one arbitrary guy on the internet. Just because I'm not in your server doesn't mean I've joined a rival gang. Furthermore, I don't owe Mersh a single thing, and if it seems like I'm not around as much, or he feels like I've moved on to bigger and better things, well, that's just something he's got to internally reconcile with. I have no control over how Mersh perceives events, and if he wants to reprise his role as Mersh Noir, and investigate my internet activity in hopes of finding more mean things said about him, that's his prerogative. Just because I liked the show way back when doesn't mean I have to stay glued to Mersh's man boobs. Prior to last night, I've always remained cordial, and going forward, I will endeavor to remain so. I, I pointed out, and I didn't say that he had any problems with us, I simply pointed out that, yeah, he is very much in a camp of people uh, that don't particularly care for us, and that's fine. Um, I don't know how that's in any way going off about him for hours, as he implied, but um, I didn't go off about you, pal. I like you, dude, but... I didn't go off about you. And here's the most important part. I'm not Lance. I'm not Thomas Daly. I have absolutely no agency over either of them and their actions are not mine. What they do on the internet is none of my business and I would never dictate to them what they can and cannot do. I've known both of them far longer than I've known Mersh and even then I don't know either of them particularly well. Just because they've gone a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that I've followed. Whatever wildly gay or schizophrenic schemes those guys are up to is frankly nothing to do with me. I'm not going to run around disavowing their actions out of some sort of loyalty to Mersh. I'm not going to follow them around the internet explaining away their sentiments in defense of Mersh's feelings. I'm not in some sort of Mersh-hating camp, nor am I responsible for a pair of hyperactive meth heads. And just because Mersh has cultivated a community of e-friends doesn't mean that's how the rest of us operate. This is paranoid narcissism at its most extreme. Not everybody who dislikes Mersh is plotting his downfall, nor are they joined at the hip in some sort of hive-minded conspiracy. They're just having some retarded fun on the internet knowing it's provoking a reaction. I mean, Mersh and his purity police are in their second week beating some autistic dead horse for the horrific crime of sending a wildly exaggerated and wildly comedic Google image dick pic to some ROTC fangirl for a fucking laugh. Now it doesn't take an IQ of 147 to realize endlessly railing on one former listener in hopes of filling weeks of content is a fucking retarded direction to take his show into. And if doing things like that happens to attract the attention of those aforementioned trolls, that's an unfortunate cross he has to bear. I don't really have an issue with him. I literally actually took the time last night to say that I was hurt uh, by the way Porcelain has handled himself. I didn't take shots at him. I didn't clip his shit up and try to tweet to people to try to brigade more people to come after me. I really wasn't all that aggressive. But again, none of this has anything to do with me. And lumping me in with those who hate Mersh is simply lazy, unproductive, and unnecessarily provocative. If I knew Mersh was about to unload this amount of passive aggressive paranoia on last night's show, I'd have maybe stuck around. I could have set myself a quota every day to ensure I comment regularly on his shows. I could have stayed in his Discord server if it meant keeping the man happy. After all, I'm nothing if not a nice guy. Now he can claim his comments were innocent and carefully chosen, but I'm not in the business of insulting my audience's intelligence. He was clearly associating me with the people who vehemently hate him, in efforts of aligning me with his perceived enemies. The hostile response from his chat supports that exact scenario. He made efforts to convince his viewers that I am a deserter, that I am a snake that I have abandoned his community and have now joined the dreaded Legion of Spurks. A came with zero provocation from me. He spent tonight's show accusing me of feeling attacked, and yet it's poor little Mersh who's claiming it's unfortunate I'm being this way. Really gets that vapidly receding noggin jogging. And the passive aggression continues with Mersh claiming me leaving his Discord was in some way conspicuous and even claiming that I personally kicked him out of Discord servers. A flat-out lie designed to further paint me as a no-good piece of British shit. He accuses me of brigading people for simply sharing a clip of his own fucking video to those asking what the devil I was tweeting about, before accusing me of suggesting that he was going off on me all night. That's, well, <laughs> that's just not what I said. Lying aside, it's clear what he's doing here. He doesn't want to be perceived as the bad guy and as such is frantically loading his bases. Ultimately, Mersh took each and every of his paranoid delusions directly to his show. 
and addressed countless falsehoods and manipulations to hundreds of his viewers. This was again done in desperate efforts of showing the chat how Porcelain was the one that turned his back on them. And again, it's important to reiterate I've literally not said or done a single thing to provoke such a dramatic overreaction from Mersh, although some would argue it's fairly in keeping with his recent Big Bear style antics. I'm not going to exacerbate the situation. I'm not going to be the bad guy here. So, um, I'm just going to let it go, man. It is what it is. And, you know, deal with it however we can. The fact that Mersh has invested any time whatsoever to working out where I might fit in the giant jigsaw of Mersh hating pieces, despite my best efforts at reassuring the guy in direct messages, shows clearly he's on the wrong side of events. He knows where I stand and I've told him as much privately. Whether he chooses to believe that is up to him. He does his thing, I'll continue to do mine. If Mersh wants to continue lifting rocks in efforts at seeking out every little thing somebody on the internet says about him, that's his obsessive prerogative. And even if he manages to find something, that doesn't mean there's some hateful conspiracy against him. In fact, it's far more likely people are simply having fun watching some guy frantically lift rocks. The longer Mersh sees this as some sort of hive-minded conspiracy where camps of naysayers are getting together to hurt him and his brand, the further away from reality he drifts. He said that I am very clearly on the side of people who are slandering me. So here's my final message to Mersh. Just try and imagine, if you will, Owen Benjamin saying those exact words. Fits pretty well, doesn't it?